Here is practice exam number two. Let's start with uh, converting 160 inches to yards. How do we do that? How do we take 160 inches and change it to yards? Well, remember conversions, English, in the English system, conversions are always by fractions, aren't they? Whereas down here in the metric, metric, you always just move the decimal. So those are the two different systems and how you convert. In the English system, it's fractions. In the metric system, it's much easier just moving the decimal. Okay, so let's start with put this over 1 to make it look like a fraction. You're going to multiply. And in the end, remember what we want in the end here. We want yards. So go ahead and put your goal down, equals, and what you want. You want yards over 1, you know, yards in the top. That is what we want to go to. Now, how do you, how do, you do each step? Well, each step, you put on the bottom what you want to cancel. And then inches will cancel. Units cross cancel, just like numbers do. Okay, now what can I go to easily? Well, here's what you want to know. One yard, or how about this? Three feet are in one yard and 12 inches are in one foot. You probably know those. Put those on your notes. You can use your notes during the exam. So put those right on your notes. So, okay, so what does that mean? What can I go to easily? Don't, don't think hard. Don't take a bunch of steps. Just here, here we have something with inches, right? I have inches here, so I'm looking for something with inches. Here's something with inches. 12 inches, one foot. Just do that. Don't worry about, you know, some of you might be pretty smart and thinking, and think, well, can't we just do 36? You're right, you could, but why work hard? Let me just keep it easy. So right now, inches are gone, and I'm in feet, do I want feet in the end? No, I want yards. So your next step, you're motivated by what you want to cancel. What do you want to cancel? Feet. Put feet down below and feet cancel out. Now what can I do easily with feet? Three feet, one yard. Three feet, one yard. See how feet cancel? And now what do we have left? Yards, that's what we want. We're there. Okay, but what do I do with my calculator? Any number in the top, you multiply. Any number in the bottom, you divide. So it's going to be 160 divided by 12, divided by 3. Just take your calculator, take 160, divided by 12. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. The weird thing here is they want, they want a fraction answer, don't they? So, um, I'm going to have to put, let me go back to where it was, the 12 and the 3 are multiplied to, so the 160 is on the top, and the 12 and the 3 are on the bottom. So that's 160 over 36. And then you just uh, reduce that fraction. You can divide um, top and bottom by maybe 4. That would be 40 over 9. And... Um, 40 over 9. I don't know if they'll take it that way or if they want a mixed number. Actually, they, they will take it just like this. I just checked. 40 over 9. They'll take the answer just like that. So you can just type it in just like that because that fraction can't reduce anymore. Just like that. So there we go. Let's, um, let's try... Let me see. Let's try coming on down here. I'm going to do part B, and we'll let me erase this. We'll get to number two in a minute. Let's do part B. So part B will be even easier. We start with 340 yards, put it over one. Our goal in the end is inches. So same thing. We're motivated by what we want to cancel. We want to cancel out yards, put them down there, cross-cancel yards. What can we do easily from yards? One yard, three feet. One, notice I put the one next to the yard, because that's what it says, one yard, three feet. Just like that. And then now we're in feet. We don't want feet in the end. We want inches over one, so we put feet in the bottom. Feet will cross-cancel. What we can do easily from feet? Three feet, one yard. Oh, no, I don't want to do that again. Let's go right back where we were. One foot, 12 inches. One foot, 12 inches. And that then it 
cross cancels feet. I end up in inches, which is what I wanted. Okay, so now by just notice how I just watched the units. I watched the words and I put the words in the right place. I let the words go first and the numbers just followed. Now I can tell what I'm supposed to do with the numbers. It's 340 over 1 times 3 over 1 times 12 over 1. All those numbers are in the top, so they multiply. Numbers in the top all multiply. So 340 times 3 times 12. I'm getting 12,240. There we go. On to number two. Now number two, again, is metric. And in the metric, we don't have to do fractions. We just move the decimal. Much nicer. Now, what you need to have on your notes for the exam is the decimal um, metric conversion. So meters in the middle. And, and then three jumps to each side. This will be decimeter, centimeter, millimeter, and this way is decameter, hectometer, kilometer. So there we go. All right, so you just follow that trail. So on this question, we're doing 40 millimeters. So 40 millimeters. So start at, here's millimeters. If you're starting at millimeters, and you want to get to what? So from millimeters to centimeters. That's one jump to the left. From millimeters to centimeters is one jump to the left. So that means I take the decimal and I go one jump to the left. Where's the decimal right now on the 40? Well, if you don't see, if you have a number like 40 and you don't see the decimal, what if somebody said the price is $40? You know where the decimal goes. It goes right there, huh? It's not, it's not 4.0. That's not 40, is it? That's just 4. So the decimal goes at the end, and then what are we supposed to do with that decimal that's currently at the end? 1 to the left, to go from millimeters back to centimeters, 1 to the left. So it'll be 4.0 centimeters, or just 4. You don't even need the point .0. Um, but either way, good enough. Okay, next part, we're going to go from meters to kilometers. From meters back to kilometers is 3 jumps to the left. So I take the decimal, which is, again, it's at the end. If you don't see the decimal, it's like a period in a sentence. Somebody doesn't put the period on, you know it's at the end. Back, one, two, three, point two eight two. And now from kilometers to meters. How do we go from kilometers to meters? Well, that's the other direction. You go one, two, three to the right to go from kilometers to meters. Three to the right. Three to the right. So where's the decimal right now? Again, it's at the end. You go three to the right, one, two, three. Those are all beyond the edge, so they bring in zeros, don't they? 3,000 meters. And finally, last part, 40 millimeters. So let's go to millimeters, which is right here. And we're going to go from millimeters to meters. What do we do back? One, two, three. Millimeters back to meters is three to the left. So I take the decimal and I go three to the left. It's right here. Go one, two, and you're to the edge. Three, you bring in a zero. Point oh four. Point oh four meters. Just like that. There we go. On to number three. Now, again, we're converting in the metric, so metric conversion, it's always about moving the decimal, we don't need to deal with fractions, so, and then this will be, yeah, okay, so how do we do it? So, again, it's all about this metric conversion chart, put, the, put it here again, meters is in the center, and this is decimeter, centimeter, millimeter, and this is decameter, hectometer, kilometer. Okay, so how do we get from square centimeters? Let's go first to uh, square meters. So they're, they're giving us 580 square centimeters. So the area of a sheet of paper, they're saying is 580 square centimeters. So how many square meters is that? So if you start here at centimeters, and you want to get to meters, that's one, two jumps to the left. From centimeters to meters is two jumps to the left, but 
these are square units. So for, uh, what do we do about that? We double everything, don't we? Second power, you, you take the number of jumps times two. For second power, you take the number of jumps times two. So if it's from centimeters to meters, it's two jumps to the left, decimals right here. We're going to go four jumps to the left. We're going to double it times two. Two times two, right? Two jumps to the left from centimeters back to meters, from centimeters to meters. And then you go times two on that is four decimals left. So four left. So one, two, three, and then the fourth one brings in a zero. Point oh five eight. So four jumps to the left again starting here. One, two, three, and then the fourth one brings in a zero. Point oh five eight. All right, and now Let's do the last part of this one, square millimeters. So we're going to go, uh, again, we're starting with square centimeters. And we're going to go to square from square centimeters to square millimeters. That's one to the right, one jump right, but then we go times two is two decimals to the right. Two decimals. So the decimals right here go one, two to the right. It's going to bring in two more zeros. That's going to be five, eight, zero, zero, zero. So that's going to be what? 58,000? 58,000. There we go. Come on down to number four. 4,000 square feet. 4,000 square feet. Now we're in English. So in English conversions, you know the deal. Fractions. It's harder to convert in English. Metric system is so nice, you just have to move decimals because they made the measure, the, uh, the, the system fit our base 10. The measuring system is base 10 and our number system is base 10. They're both base 10. They're both decimal. That's what decimal means. Right? How long is a decade? 10 years. Des means 10. So we have a decimal system. We have a base 10 number system. You learned that in Math 10A. You know that. We have a decimal system, base 10. Well, the metric system is a measuring system that's all based on 10. Like one meter is 10 decimeters, and one decimeter is 10 centimeters, etc., etc. They're always 10 times as big the next level. So they just said, hey, let's make our measuring system match our number system. Our number system is base 10. Let's make our measure system go by 10s also, and then it'll be easy to convert. We'll just move decimals. That's why that's so easy. English is so much harder because it's not base 10, right? Uh, one yard is not 10 feet. It's 3 feet. And one foot is not 10 inches. It's 12 inches. It's just weird, right? They just made it weird. So it, we have to use fractions. So here we go. We're starting with 4,000 square feet. Put it over one. We want to get to yards, square yards in the end. Okay. So you know the deal, right? We multiply and we put the feet down here. Now, don't make it feet squared yet. We will in a minute. Hold off for a second. Just put regular feet, okay? And, and I know to put it in the bottom because I want feet to cancel. What do I want to get to? Well, yards, square yards eventually. So I'm going to put yards up here. What do we have the connection? Right there, one yard is three feet. Notice nothing is squared on that red fraction yet. Nothing is squared. So now you have to square everything. Once you've got the numbers and the words, Square it all. Square the feet, square the three, square the yard, square the one. We have to square the top and the bottom of the fractions, the, 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 uh, of that fraction, the numbers and the words, because we're just squaring the whole fraction, top and bottom. Right? If one yard is three feet, then one squared yard is three feet squared, is what we're saying. Okay. We square the whole thing. Does that make sense? What what we're saying there? I want to make sure that's real for you and not just some rule Mr. Heron says. You're going to be a teacher of this stuff. You want to really understand it. Why is that okay to do? Why is that true? Well, because remember, let me show you um, what is 
if this is one foot, one foot, one foot, and this is one foot, one foot, one foot, then this whole distance is one yard, and this whole distance here is one yard, isn't it? Because one yard, remember, is three feet. So this is three feet tall, so it's one yard tall. This is three feet wide, so it's one yard wide. Notice this is one, one square yard. This is one square yard. It's one yard by one yard. It's a square yard. It's a square that's one yard by one yard. And how many, it's one square yard is what it is. And how many square feet is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine square feet. Do you see that? One square yard, one yard tall, three feet tall, by one yard wide, three feet wide, comes out to be nine little foot-by-foot -foot squares, doesn't it? Nine of those. So that's why you can square all the units in a conversion, and it's true. If one yard is three feet, then one squared, which is just one square yard, is three squared, nine square feet. See, this is true. One square yard one squared is one, is three squared, nine square feet. So that's what you do. And now, feet squared cancel, and you're in yard squared, which is what you want to be. So how do I finish this up? Well, this is going to equal um, 4,000 on the top, right? 4,000 is on the top, and three squared, which is nine, on the bottom. And that's our answer. They'll let us leave it just like this. We don't have to make it into a um, mixed number. They'll take it just like that. There we go. Number five, parallelogram. So what's the area of a parallelogram? So you're going to have several area formulas on your notes for this exam number two. So area of a parallelogram. Area of a parallelogram. Is just base times height. It's like a big rectangle that's been shifted. Do you see it? So this is like a rectangle here that's been shifted. Can you, it's like imagine if it was made out of jello. You could kind of shift it back, right? You could take this top here and just kind of slide that thing to the right, and it would go back and be a rectangle, wouldn't it? This would be eight, right? That makes sense, what happened there? So it's just think of it as a rectangle that's been shifted a little bit. And what's the area of a rectangle? You know the area of a rectangle is just one side times the other, isn't it? That's how you figure out how much space. We're talking about space in the middle of something. It's just one side times the other, right? Imagine if you had something that's like, um, you know, two, two squares wide and three squares tall. How many total squares are in there? There's six, aren't there? There's six squares in there. It's two by three. There's six squares in there. So it's a, so my point is, a rectangle, the total space, the area inside of a rectangle is just length times width. It's just one side times the other, just two, times three, right? Because there's two rows of three. There's clearly six squares inside that rectangle. Well, a parallelogram is the same thing as a rectangle. It's just been shifted sideways like it's made out of jello. So it's just one side times the other. But careful, we're using base and height. Now, yeah, I'm not saying that very well. Let me say that better. It's not really one side times the other. It's, it's actually base times height. Now you might say, well, should I go eight times eight? Or should I go eight times seven? I've been saying one side times the other, which is true for a rectangle, one side times the other. But the area of a parallelogram is really not one side times the other. That's why I'm saying I'm not saying it very well. It's base times height. Now, remember height. How do you measure your height? What if you're a person? You are a person. Standing on the ground and you measure your height by going diagonally down to the ground. Is that your height? 
No way. You'd be super tall, ready for the NBA, right? Height goes straight down to the ground. We all know that, right? Height has to be straight down to the ground or it's not height. So which one of those numbers, this 8, this 8, or this 7, is really height? 7 is the height, isn't it? Because it goes straight down. See that 90-degree angle there? That's why they're putting that down. It's from the tip top straight down to the ground. That is really height. Tip top straight down to the ground. That is height. Height is 7. Okay. So the height is 7. The base is 8. So it's base, which is 8. Right here's the base. And the height is 7. Well, what about this other 8? What is that? That's just another side. But that's not the base. That's not the bottom. And it's not the height. We don't use it. 8 times 7, 56 is our answer. Oh, and they want the units on that. It's going to be uh, square centimeters. Because area is always square units. It's, it's how many squares, isn't it? It's always what we're talking about for area is how many actual squares. That's why it's second power units. All right, let's go to number six. We have a trap here, a trapezoid. How do you find the area of this trapezoid? Well, I could give you the formula. And that's fine. I'd rather, uh, I'd rather just say, well, here, let me give it two different ways. The formula, which is a half... Base 1 plus base 2 times the height. So we could do that. So you see, this is base 1 and base 2. They're the top and the bottom. It doesn't matter which one you call 1 and 2. Which one's the height? What number there is the height? Remember, height has to go straight down to the ground. That's what height means. Height is right here. It's the 11. What about the square root of 137? That's nothing to us. That's just one of the sides. We don't care about that. We don't need it. So the area is going to be a half, base 1, which is 14, plus base 2, which is 18, times the height, which is the 11. So that's a half, um, 32, I guess, times 11. So you choose your calculator. Um, I'm getting 176. Square centimeters, again, because area is how many actual squares could fill up the object, 176. Now, let me, give it this, let me do this problem again another way, more intuitive. We could have just made a line straight down here, couldn't we? And then, and then, well, here, I'll just leave these base 1 and base 2 as they were. But then this part, you know, would be 14, and this part here to here would be 4, because it's 18 all the way across, right? So that part would be 4. And this is 11 from here to here. And so this is a little right triangle. So I could have found the area that way. So the area of this triangle, what's the area of a triangle? Half base times height plus, and what's the area of this rectangle? It's 11 by 14. Not the 18. Now 18 is all the way across. I'm just, I broke it into just this rectangle and then this um, triangle here, two separate shapes. So that rectangle is 14 by 11, right? Could have just done it that way. So it's a, it's a half times base times height. This is just another way to figure out the problem. You might need to do this on the real exam is just kind of use your intuition and break shapes into two other shapes. A half the base of the triangle the base of the triangle here is 4, right? I'm doing this triangle right now, times the height of this triangle. What's the height of that triangle? 11. Plus 14 times 11, which is for the rectangle. So that's a 22 plus, what's that, 140, 154. Add those up. 176. Isn't that beautiful? Same answer either way you do it. You can break it into a triangle and a rectangle, or you can just use straight out the trapezoid formula. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, 176 square centimeters. So we broke it into a triangle and a rectangle. All right, number seven. All right, find the area of the following shaded region. So... To find see this shade, they want us to find this shaded region. 
shaded equals the whole circle minus the two small circles, right? We're going to figure it out by figuring out the area of the entire circle, the big circle. Let's just call it the big circle. This whole big circle here. Find that area and then subtract the two small circles. And then we'll have the difference will be the shaded region. So what's the area of the big circle? Well, the area of any circle is pi r squared, where I'll use a big R here, radius, minus, and then for the two small circles, 2 pi little r squared, because they have a different radius. So what's the big radius of the big circle, of the whole circle? Remember, radius of a circle, what is radius? Radius of any circle is middle to the edge. The radius is how far from the middle to the edge. So from the middle all the way to the edge of the big circle must be 8, right? Because it's that 4 twice. So this is pi 8 squared. Now minus 2 pi now the radius of the little circle. It, that must be the 4. That's the little r, whereas the big r was the 8. The radius of the big circle, the whole circle is 8. The radius of each of those little circles is 4, right? Again, radius is from the middle to the edge. So there we go. And so what does this come out to be? This is 64 pi minus, if you use your calculator here, 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32 pi. On that, subtract on your calculator, 64 pi minus 32 pi, the difference is 32 pi. The area is 32 pi, and again, it's square centimeters because area is always square units. Number eight, find the area of the shaded region. Okay, well, the shaded region involves half a circle and a triangle. So we've got a half a circle plus a triangle. Going to add up the area of each of those. So what's the formula for a circle? It's pi r squared. So I'm going to go a half of pi r squared. And um, what's the r? What's the radius for that circle? From the middle to the edge. That's always radius. The little r, that must be 4. Okay. And now what's the area of a triangle? Triangle is a half base times height. Now, I hope it's not confusing. We're taking half a circle. That's why we have this half. For the triangle, triangle formula automatically, the area of a triangle formula automatically has the half in it. Uh, that's because a triangle is half of a, is usually half a rectangle. It's half of a parallelogram in general, but often, if it's a right triangle... Uh, it's half of a rectangle, isn't it? That's why the triangle formula has a half in it. It's a half base times height. So what's the base and height of that triangle? Well, base is here, height is here. Remember, base and height must be at 90 degrees to each other, right? Because height must be straight to the base. Now, you can, you can turn, turn something upside down and its height goes down now, but that's still its height, right? The height is how far straight to the base, at 90 degrees to the base, straight to the ground, even if the ground's been turned upside down. So the height is 8, the base is 4, it's the same as the other side. So the height is 8, the base is 4. So work those out. Here we get, this is 16, half of 16 is 8 pi plus... And here, 4 times 8 is 32. Half of 32 is 16. And that's our answer. They want us just to leave it just like that. And that's square centimeters because, again, area is square units. There we go. Number 9. A circular flower bed is 19 meters in diameter and has a circular sidewalk around it 3 meters wide. Find the area of the walk. Well... It's important on this one to get a good picture to know what it is they're talking about. So they're saying that, let's see if I can draw it uh, here. So let 
my best effort at a circle. So we've got a circular flower bed, and it's got a sidewalk around it, three meters wide. Um, so like right here. So this is the um, flower bed. And the flower bed is 19 meters diameter. What does diameter mean? All the way across, huh? So here's the middle. It's 19 meters all the way across the flower bed. This is the flower bed. So they got a circular flower bed. They planted a bunch of flowers in a big circular flower bed, right? Circular flower bed. And it's got a circular sidewalk around it. So this is the sidewalk that goes around it. And it's um, three meters wide. So that means from here to here is three. And from here to here is three, and etc. All the way around, it's, it's three meters wide. Okay, and they want to know what? The area of the walk. The area of the circular sidewalk. Like how much cement? Say usually they make those out of cement. How much cement would they need if you were building this? Um, engineers and people that do this kind of construction thing, they would need to know how much total area is gonna be in this sidewalk. So how are we gonna figure that out? Well, it's kind of like uh, this problem right here where we have the big circle subtract the two small circles. That's the, the deal here. If we want the area of the sidewalk, then we've got to take the, the big circle. So the, uh, the sidewalk, the sidewalk area will be the big circle minus the inner circle. The flower bed, right? It's the big circle minus the inner circle, right? So if you want to subtract out the area of this flower bed, take the whole circle on the outside, right? The big circle all the way around the outside, and which includes everything, and then subtract the whole out of the middle, like subtracting the whole out of the donut, and we get the sidewalk left over. So the big circle, the big circle area is going to be pi r squared capital R. And the little inner circle, subtract pi little r squared. So, okay, what's the big R? What's the So from the middle all the way to there. How? From there to there. How far is that? That's the big radius. Well, you know what? Actually, first, before we do that, let me go back. We'll do that in a minute, but I think it'll be easier to... First, we already know all the way across is 19, right? So if you take that 19 and you divide it by 2 in your calculator, you get 9.5. That means halfway across is 9.5. Let's, let's put that in. That'll be helpful. So from here to here is 9.5, and it's also 9.5 here. So it's 9.5 on each side. 9.5, 9.5, okay. Now, that's the little r, isn't it? That's the inner radius. That's, that's the little r, this little r. Because that's the inner circle. That's a radius is from the middle to the edge. So the inner circle, the flower bed, from the middle to the edge is 9.5. So let me let me put that part in there. So minus, kind of running out of room here, minus pi 9.5 squared. Put that there. And then what's the big outer radius? So from here all the way to the outside, the big outer radius must be the 9.5 plus the 3. 12.5. It must be the 9.5 plus the 3. So 
so it's 12.5. So the big outer radius is 12.5. It's 9.5 plus 3. It's 12.5. That's the outer radius. All right, so now we use our calculator on this one. So 12.5 squared. Getting... 156.25 pi minus 9.5 squared is 90.25 pi. So you subtract those and you get um, uh, 66. There we go, 66 pi. And we just leave the answer just like that. So the area, that's the area of the sidewalk. That's the total concrete they would need. Um, that's the area of concrete they would need, 66 pi, because that's the big circle. Subtract the inner circle. To number 10, how much area is the shaded region in squares? Like how many actual squares fit in that shape? Well, it's hard to make. See, right there, that's half a square. That's, that's a hard way to go. It's a triangle. I think the best thing we should do is we should say, look, it's a triangle. The area of a triangle is a half base times height. It's the formula for the area of any triangle. But the question is, what are base and height? Remember, um... Base and height have to be at 90 degrees to each other. So if this is the base, two jumps, right? One, two. Whoops, I didn't do that very well. So the base here is two jumps. It's, it's one, two. It's two jumps wide. The base is two jumps wide. What's the height? Is, is this the height right here? Is that two? Well, that's not 2, and that's not the height. This is the height. From here to here, and that height is 2. It's a coincidence that it came out the same as the other one. But why is that height? Because remember, if this is the base, height has to be at 90 degrees to the ground, right? If this is some weird statue shape, you know, if somebody makes some weird statue, I didn't do that very well, it's shape, and they're wondering, how, and this is the ground it's sitting on, this is the base, the ground, this is the ground here, and they want to say, how high is it? you got to go straight down to the ground, that's height, isn't it? Height is straight down to the ground, so then the area of this triangle is a half times the base of two, the height of two, the area is two. That means exactly two squares would fit into that shape. It's kind of weird, isn't it? To think that exactly two squares fit into that shape. But that must be the case. It'll take up exactly two squares. All right, let's go on to number 11. Oh, number 11's right down here. So number 11, they want us to figure out how many squares fit in this shape. Well, you could do it by just making squares like this. Um, let's see, let's do this. So 1, 1, 1, there's 3 squares. This is 0.5, half a square. This is 0.5, half a square, isn't it? We're just counting squares. Now, how much is that part? Well, can you see that it's half of this? What if I did this whole shape here? How much is that? That's two squares. And so this must be one because it's half of that whole two square area. Does that make sense, right? If I did it like this, that would be two squares. And this triangle is using up half of that. So that's one square. So how many total squares? 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0.5 plus 0.5. You add those all up. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
So five squares, number 11. That must be using up exactly five squares. The shaded region is using up exactly five squares. Now, number 12, this one's a little harder. You, you could try doing this. If we try doing it the way we did the last one, we're going to run into trouble. Let me show you. Let me do that for a little bit. See, we'll just do the same thing. Just start counting squares. There's a square. And um, you could do this right here. This is one square. You might look at that and say, well, this is one because it's half of this whole region here. That whole thing would be, you know, one and one would be two squares. And so this is half of that whole region. So this must be one square. That's true. Yeah. Okay. But that's where you're going to run out. Of, that's as far as you can go. I can. What are you going to do for the stuff that remains? There's no way to do it. Like, I say, well, how much, how much is this right here? I have no idea. It only goes part way. Is that exactly halfway between the marks? We don't know that. Probably not. How much is this region here? This is weird. Can we figure that out? That's kind of, it's kind of tricky to do. I mean, you could, you could try to do some fancy formulas, maybe. Yeah, you could, you could. I could show you some tricky ways, with base and height and stuff. Um, to do that, but I think still we're going to run into trouble, maybe, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot, easier. Let's, let's do it, here, let's do it two different ways, I think the easiest way, I'll do it the easiest way first off, is to calculate what's missing, because that's pretty easy, what I mean is, let's just count what's not there, right, the total number of squares well, here, let, here. Let me let me do this way. The shaded, the shaded amount will equal the total minus the blank, won't it? Let's just count how many blank squares. There's one. There's one. How much is this? It's half of that, half of that two. So it's one, huh? Right there. That must be one. Or you could say it's a triangle. It's one by two. Half of base times height, half of one times two is one. So let me get rid of this. I don't confuse this with too many numbers. Either way, here's a triangle here. All right, see how that's half? You do this whole thing here, it's half of half of one, two, three. Oh no, no, it's not exactly half, is it? Oh yeah, yeah, it is. I'm sorry. Yeah. The the blank area, this blank area is half of three squares, it's it's 1.5. Or you could say it's one wide by three tall. One by three is three, half of three, half of three dollars is a dollar fifty. So it must be 1.5, it's half of base times height. Remember a triangle area is half of base times height where base and height meet at 90 degrees. So it's 1.5, okay, let's keep going. This is one. Um, this is one, this right here is half, it's, it's, uh, it's one because it's, it's two this way and one this way, half of base times height, half of two times one, half of two is one, right, or it's just half of these two, so the blank area, I'm just, just focusing on the blank area, that's all I'm counting right now is the blank area. So that's got to be, sorry, I'm making my diagram a little messy here. This has got to be one, half of, it's half of two squares. Um, this is also one, because it's two by one. All right, now that leaves us with one more tricky area. How do we figure out this right here? Do you see that's a triangle sitting sideways? This is his base of one. And his height goes from right here. Let me do a different color. From right here to right here. That's his height, which is three. The height is three, right? Because remember, height has to go at 90 degrees straight 
to the base. The base is here of one. It's like, a, it's like a triangle sitting sideways. This is the ground over here. This is the base. And the height goes from the tippy top there straight down to the ground. Height is three. And the area of a triangle is a half base times height. It's a half three times one. Half of three. Half of three dollars. Dollar fifty. This, this blank area has got to be 1.5, doesn't it? All right. So now the shaded area is going to be, first off, the total. What's the total area up there? Maybe I should just leave it up there. What's the total? How many total squares tall is this thing? One, two, three, four. It's four squares tall and four squares wide. 16 total squares. There's 16 total squares in this diagram. Minus how many are blank? How many blank squares? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then these two make three, eight, nine, ten. Sixteen minus ten, six must be shaded. There must be six shaded squares because there's sixteen total and ten of them are blank. So that's leaves six that are shaded. See how we figured that out? That's a pretty tricky one. So be ready for that. There's one like that on the actual exam. To number 13. So on number 13 here, we are told to use the Pythagorean theorem to find x and y in this diagram. Okay. So... Let's start with x. Um, here we have right up here. I'm going to make a right triangle, put a right angle right there like that. 15, this is 25, isn't it? 15, 25, and x. See that little right triangle up there? Anytime you have a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem, which says a squared plus b squared is c squared. Remember, when you use the Pythagorean theorem, you got the a and the b, the order doesn't matter, but it does matter for the c. You got to make sure you know which one is the c, the hypotenuse. That's the one across from the right angle, the one across from the right angle, the C is the X in this case. So the other two, it doesn't matter which one's first or second. 15 squared plus 25 squared is X squared. Square that out, you get, you should calculate 225 plus 625 is X squared. So add that up, bring it up here. X squared is, what is that, 850? x squared is 850, so then we got to simplify that. So root it, root it. How do you square root 850? Well, it's 85 times 10. You use your calculator. Anything ending in a zero, you know, is times 10. Divide 85 by 5, you'll get because you know 5 goes in and ends in a 5. 5 times 17, and this is 5 times 2. So then this is the square root. The 850, I've broken it down. It's 17 times 2 times 5 times 5. I reordered it to put the two 5s together, right? 5, 17, 5, 2. And then remember what square roots do. How do you simplify a square root? We've learned how to simplify square roots. How do you simplify a square root? You take the two 5s from the inside, and they send one outside. Remember, square roots are a two-for-one deal. So that's going to end up being 5. 1, 5 makes it to the outside, and those two are gone. It's 2 in for 1 out, 2 for 1. And what's left over? And the 17 times 2, since they're left over inside and they can't come out, they just re-multiply 5 root 34. So there's x, 5 root 34. Now let's get our hands on y. Now that we have x... Let's go back here to this. Let's erase this triangle. And now let's think about a second triangle. Here's x involving y. 
So there's, there's a right triangle. You can see that one kind of going through the middle of that shape involving x and y. So up here I did the work to find x. I'm going to do the work to find y down, down here. I'll just forget about number 14. Um, how do we find y? Well, we've got a right triangle again. So Pythagorean a squared plus b squared is c squared. So which one is the C, the one across from the right angle? The C is the Y. So 9 squared plus X squared, right? 9 squared plus X squared is Y squared. And 9 squared, you know, is 81. And what is X? Well, here is X. We got that in the first part. That's why we had to get X first. Squared equals y squared, like that. So how are we gonna, how are we gonna do that? Um, well, let me bring it over here. So 81 plus, now the question is, what is this? What is 5 root 34 squared? Well, you square the 5, which is 25, and you remove the root, which is a plain 34. Do you see what happens? And then you multiply those together on your calculator. 25 times 34. And I'm getting 850. What happened there? Well, uh, we squared the 5. Squared the 5 because it's squared, and then we remove the root. Remember, squaring, second power, and roots are opposites. That's an important lesson in this chapter that you understand that. The roots and two powers are the opposites of each other. So that two power cancels the root. Do you see why it didn't square? Like, why didn't I go 34 to the second power? Well, because the root canceled the square out, so it never hit the 34, whereas it hit the 5, right? And 5 squared became 25. So you multiply that together, 850. So this becomes 81 plus 850 is y squared. Add those together on your calculator. I'm getting 931 is y squared. Now, I need to root it, root it, root it. And then we got to break down the 931. Does anything go into 931? Um, yeah, actually, if you divide by 7, you'll find 133, and then if you divide by 7, again, it's kind of a weird number, you'll find 19. So in other words, this is the square root of 19 times 7 times 7. It's as far as it'll break down, except now, square roots, remember, they're a 2 for 1 deal. Two sevens in, one seven out, and they're gone. So you get a 7 on the outside, 19 left over on the inside. 7 root 19. 7 root 19. So that's a pretty tricky problem. Not easy. Make sure you practice that and know that for the actual exam. Put that on your notes. Number 14. A 24-foot ladder is leaning against a wall, and the wall is perpendicular to the ground. So here, let's draw a picture of what they're talking about. We got the ground. We got a wall here. And we got a ladder. Le with the ladder. Leaning against the wall. And the wall's perpendicular, right? 90 degrees to the ground. The base of the ladder is 8 feet from the wall. So th this is the base of the ladder here. The bottom of the ladder. And, and this is the wall, so it's 8 feet. How high above the ground is the top of the ladder? Oh, it's a 24-foot ladder. So this ladder is 24 feet. And how tall? What, what's the H? What's the height above the ground that the top of the ladder up here hits? How high up? Find H. So it's the Pythagorean thing. So we have a right triangle. Anytime you have that, that right angle right there, it's a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared is c squared. Which one's the c? you got to make sure you get that one right. This one's the c, the 24. So 8 squared plus h squared 
is 24 squared. 64 plus 8 squared. What is 24 squared? 576. 576. How do we solve that? Subtract 64 from both sides. Cancels out there. We get 8 squared. 576 minus 64 is 512 on this one. And then square root, square root. So h equals, what's the square root of 512? We've got to break down that 512. It's 2 times 256, and that's 2 times 128, and that's 2 times 64. Oops, let me move this. And then that's 8 times 8. This, this one just keeps going and going and going. This is kind of a crazy question. Um, in fact, let's stop it. You might think, well, shouldn't we break those eights out? Well, that's a pair. So, um, let me bring it, let me write it over here. So it's the square root of, what do we have now? Two, 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 and a pair of eights. Two, 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 pair of eights. Anytime you got a matching pair, you don't have to break those down further because they can come out. Remember, it's a two for one deal. So anytime you see two of something, just ship those out right away. So two eights, remember, that's what square roots are. Two for one deal. So two eights in, one eight out, and they're gone. And two twos in, one two out, and they're gone. They'll multiply on the outside just like they were multiplying on the inside. So what's the height? Eight times two on the outside, 16. What's left on the inside? Just that leftover two. 16 root two. That's the height of the ladder. 16 root two. And that must, I'll put it up here, 16 root 2. And that must be just in plain feet because height is just normal feet. It's not area. It's not square feet. It's not volume. It's not cubic feet. Everybody okay with that? Um, do you see how we simplified that at the end? Again, why did I not break down those two 8s? Because there was two of them. If there was one 8, then I would have to break it down. But square roots are a 2 for 1 deal. So anytime I see 2 of something, why go further? You're going to ship those out. Two of those in will be one of those out. So two eights in, one eight out, two twos in, one two out, and then one two's left over. And eight times two on the outside, 16 root two. Okay, so number 15. Find the area. Let's do part A first off. Find the area of that figure. How are we going to do it? Well... Um, we're going to need to have the height here. So how can we find that height? Using the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared is c squared. Which ones? This is the right angle here. This is the C. It's across from the right angle. So, so A, B, C. So the C is the 5. So A squared, 3 squared, plus B squared is the height. Whoops, I should call that the height. The height squared is C squared, which is the 5, right? The 5 is the C. That's the one across from the right angle. So this time the letter is not the C. The 5 is the C. So, okay, so what becomes of that? That's 9 plus H squared is 25. Subtract 9 from both sides. Boom. We get H squared is 16. Root it, root it. H is 4. So the height is 4. Okay, so what then? Well, the area, what kind of shape is this? This is a parallelogram, isn't it? See, it's a parallelogram. Top and bottom are parallel. Right and left are parallel. The bottom is a total of 20. The top is the same, 20. And the two sides are 5. So what's the area of a parallelogram? It is base times height. Parallelogram is just like a rectangle that's been shifted like jello. 
So it's base times height. The base is 20, right? The ground floor is 20. The height we now know is 4. That's why we worked hard to find that height. The height is 20. And so 20 times 4, 80. And that's square feet because area is always square units. Let's try part B now. Part B. Oh, here we go. Here's a better place. Let's do part B over here. So part B, we need to find the area of this triangle. Area, we're doing, we're doing this one down here. Area of a triangle. What's the area of a triangle? It's a half times base times height. So it's a half times base times height. So um, what's the base? What is the base of that triangle? We don't know. we got to find it before we can use that formula. So how are we going to find the base? Well, let's... Now, is, is this entire triangle, this whole big thing, a right triangle? No. The whole big thing is not a right triangle, but if we break it into half, <clears throat> just this half right here, right half or left half, it doesn't matter, that's a right triangle. That has a right angle in it, doesn't it? Call this x. So um, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Whenever you have a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have to take half of this thing to use the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared is c squared, only usable for right triangles. We now have a right triangle. We have a right angle. So what's the c? The one across from the right angle, the longest side, is the 70. That's the C. The other two, doesn't matter their order, 60 squared plus X squared. So let's solve that for X. That's going to be 3,600 plus X squared is 4,900. Subtract 3,600 from both sides. X squared is 1,300. There, and then root it, root it, x is. Now, how do you simplify 1,300? Well, that's 13 times 100, and 100 is 10 times 10. And I'm not going to break those 10s down to 2525. 2, 5. Why? Because I got a pair, remember? Square roots are 2 for 1. So bring it, um, so this x is going to be 10 square root of 13. Does that make sense? Because the two 10s in send 110 out and they're gone and we're left with a 13 on the inside. So x is 10 root 13. So that means this side is 10 root 13 because that, remember that's what x was. Let me go back here. That's what x was right here. It was one side of this. That means the other side is also 10 root 13. So the whole base Double that, and let's just let's go like this. The whole base is double that, is 20 root 13. Sorry, I'm running out of room down there to do this problem. The whole base is 20 root 13 because it's twice as far as the 10 root 13. Does that make sense there? The whole base, the whole bottom of that entire triangle is 20 root 13. The 10 root 13 was just for the half that we did the Pythagorean theorem on because that half had a right angle in it. That was a right triangle, that half of it. But now we want to go back to finding, because we have to find the area for the entire triangle. So the base of the entire triangle is double that. Double 10 root 13 is 20 root 13. So here we go. We can now do the area of the whole triangle. It's a half times the base, which we now know is 20 root 13, times the height, which is 60. So the base and the height. The height is 60. This is the height, right? That's straight down to the base. So that is, use your calculator, half of 20 is 10, and 10 times 60 is 600 root 13. So that's our answer.
600 root 13, and that's going to be square feet because area is always in square units. See what I did there? I just took my calculator. You could just take a half times 20 times 60. Just multiply all the numbers outside of roots. Half of 20 is 10, 10 times 60 is 600, and then just keep the root 13. So make sure you can do that. There's definitely, these problems are definitely on the exam. So make sure you can do both of these problems. So practice. Number 16, find the surface area of this right circular cylinder. Okay, so we need the surface area formula for right circular cylinder. So SA, surface area, surface area. Well, what it is, it's basically you have a circle on the top and a circle on the bottom, and so that's 2 pi r squared, right? Because it's pi r squared on the top and it's pi r squared on the bottom. That's the area of a circle, so we have 2 pi r squared. That's the top and the bottom. Plus, now we have the sides. So what's the formula for the sides? Well, can you picture, if we were to cut this, boom, 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 like imagine this is a label going around a soup can. And if we were to cut it right there and open it up, let me do it down here. Can you picture that it would be a big rectangle? This would be where the cut was. Right there and there. Right? If we cut it and opened it up, it would be a big rectangle. And you know the area of a rectangle is just one side times the other side. So this side is the 25, right? You can put it on the left or the right. I'll, I'll put it over here on the right. That's, that's the 25. So that's the 25. But what's the width down here? What's the width of this? Well, the width was how far around the top of the circle was. That's different than the area inside the circle. Those are two different things, and you need to understand those two different things. So it's how far around the edge that we're talking about here. How far around the edge. That's called the circumference. So this right here... This width, or I already did it on the bottom, didn't I? This is called the circumference. It's how far around the circle, which is 2 pi r, not to be confused with area. So we have two different formulas. Area inside a circle is pi r squared. Circumference, circumference, around the edge of a circle. Whoops, so a lot of people confuse these two formulas. Circumference around the edge of a circle is 2 pi r. It's confusing because they have the same three pieces. They both have a 2, a pi, and an r. For the area formula, the r is squared. That makes sense because the area is in square units, huh? Whereas the circumference, that's just a length. It's not square units. It's just a length around the outer edge. That's 2 pi r. Very similar, those two formulas. Okay, so this circumference around the outer edge, this is 2 pi r around the outer edge. That, when you cut the soup can and open it up, that becomes the width, doesn't it? That becomes the width of the soup can, of the label. I mean, when you open it up, it's the width. So it's 2 pi r. So then the area of the sides is 25 times 2 pi r. Because its length is 25 times 2 pi r. Or in other words, here's a better way. Let me, let me just express it. It's height. It's height of the can times 2 pi r. 
So we say it's 2 pi r h. I'm just explaining to you where the formula comes from so it'll make sense for you. And then we're going to plug everything in. Does that make sense? That's how they get the formula. You don't have to go through that every time. I just wanted to show you once and so that the formula makes sense because you're going to be teaching this to people, to younger folks. So you want to really understand the formulas. That's how they get the area of the sides because the sides, if you cut it open, it's just a big rectangle, and there's the height on one side and the circumference, how far around the circle, 2 pi r, is the other. A rectangle is one side times the other, so it's height times 2 pi r. It's 2 pi r h. You can put that h in the front or the back. It doesn't matter. So then the surface area, now we have the formula. So this is the formula that you want to definitely have on your notes for the exam. If, for, if there's going to be certainly a right circular cylinder, a soda can or a soup can, on the exam. So it's 2 pi r. What's the radius? That's the 7, right? That's from the member. Radius is from the middle to the edge. So on the exam, if I give you like all the way across is like 10 or something, then the radius would just be 5, wouldn't it? The radius is just halfway across from the middle to the edge. Radius squared plus 2 pi radius again times the height, which is 25. So this is 2 times 49, 98 pi, plus uh, 2 times 25, 50 times 7, 350 pi, 448 pi, 448 pi, there we go. They want you to leave it just like that, square centimeters, because it's area, the area of the label on the outside.